That's the flaw, and the greatest sin of humanity, the girl said. You were born with none of your intelligence, but all of your heart, fully capable of feeling pain and torment, but with no power to understand. It opens you up to abuse, to neglect, to unimaginable pain. All you can do is feel. She studied her hands again. All you can do is feel, but never understand. What a sick power it is that you are given. Five Nights at Freddy's, a series that kicks you in the balls right when you think you got something right. And Scott, my friend, I have only one question for you, and I'm not going to ask what's in the box. But why are you such a troll, man? Why? Anyways, before we begin, guys, this is our 100th episode for The Guy Gaming Show. I can't believe it. It would be appreciated if you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button, as we're so close to 500 subscribers that it's insane. Anyways, today we'll continue our ultimate custom night theory that we started a few weeks ago with the questions like, who's the one we shouldn't have killed? What if we're playing as Michael Afton? What's the meaning behind toy chica cutscenes? And all of that. Let's get started. Hey guys, I'm Chantel from Smackin' Pie and you're watching The Guy Gaming Show episode 100. Just a side note, Smack wanted to make it special. So here we are, TGGS 100th episode in FNAF form. And before we begin, feel free to hit that subscribe button as we upload videos related to gaming every single day. And that's right, every single day. Let me put you back together and take you apart all over again. With all due respect, those aren't the design choices we were curious about, Mr. Afton. There were four, then three, then two, then one. First of all, we apologize for making this video so late. Nisha and Smack worked so hard on the last two scripts. That's right, weeks of work put into it. And then because of a stupid PC error, we lost all the work. But regardless, we're here. However, it's only going to be a two or maybe three part video for Ultimate Custom Night because the actual plan that Smack had was to cover all of the Ultimate Custom Night in one video. But since we're at 100 episodes, he wanted to make this a FNAF video. And we're also working on mega final FNAF theories where we'll tackle everything from timeline, stories, characters, murders, etc. Anyways, these two or three parts will tackle Three things. One, who's the one we shouldn't have killed? Two, what if we're playing as Michael Afton? And three, what do these toy cheeky cutscenes even represent? And the other one as well. So in order to answer the first one, or any question, we'll have to make a list of important characters. Throughout FNAF, Scott provided not so much information about characters, but we still have a list for you guys. Charlie, aka Henry's daughter. Elizabeth Afton, aka William's daughter. Bite victim and five children that died from the hands of Will Trap, aka infamous five missing children. Now get this, in Ultimate Custom Night character selection screen, Puppet is referred to as he and so does Funtime Foxy, but Puppet possesses a girl spirit, Foxy, even though he's mentioned as he and that he is in Ladies Night? What? Are you kidding me Scott, really? Regardless, it goes same with so many other animatronics here and gender confusion works in this game, so keep that factor in mind because we'll need it later. Now, in FNAF 6, good ending, where you have to salvage all of the animatronics and get the Law Keeper certificate. You'll unlock this rare screen which shows six tombstones slash graves and only four names can be seen, Gabrielle, Jeremy, Fritz and Susie. The final one is hidden and the other one in the back is like looking over them while all their souls are finally gone to rest. Now I'm not going to go into detail since that's for our mega theory, but a quick rundown. The five graves are the first five kids that got killed from Will Trap, aka 5MCI, back in FNAF 1. And and later in FNAF 2, these souls are Freddy, Foxy, Bonnie and Chica, as we know from two evidences. 1. According to MatPat, the FNAF 3 good ending, where the core 4 animatronics are finally got to rest, and this screen was shown where their heads were aligned the same way as FNAF ending 6. Coincidence? Nope, Scott doesn't do coincidences. 2. In FNAF 6, Fruity Maze game, there was a girl that got trapped by Will Trap, and he basically lured her inside to kill her, and she's the first victim as we learn from Ultimate Custom Night character. To death lines. Withered Chica says, I was the first. I've seen everything. And her name was and is Susie. And basically, she was the first to get killed out of the five MCI. Three. 
This is further supported by the final novel, The Fourth Closet, on page 207. Beside them was the little girl with blonde curls, and later on on the same page, you say he loved your dog. Carlton asked the blonde girl, grasping for answers. Mummy said that he went to heaven, but I heard Daddy say he was hit by a car, but I knew it wasn't true. Bonnie told me it wasn't true. He said he had found my puppy. She brushed a lock of hair from her shoulder with her hand. And did he take you to your puppy? Carlton asked. He took me but I don't remember. But it was him who helped you. Carlton pointed to the yellow bunny in the drawing that showed all five kids. Yes, that's him, she smiled. My name is Susie, she added. There you go. It's confirmed that her name was Susie and that she thought William is her friend, as he's good in playing tricks with kids. Come to think of it, he's not just a murderer. He's a pedo murderer. Anyway, Susie was the first one that got killed, and so does other victims. Three boys, two girls. Confirmed in the fourth closet again. On page 139, nothing, just Jessica said, looking at the frightened faces that surrounded her. There were four children in all, two boys and two girls. And later on page 203, and this is big, what are you putting back together? Carlton asked. My friends. Michael pointed to a single picture propped against the wall. It showed five children, three boys and two girls, standing together in a cheerful pose with a yellow rabbit standing behind them. But I know what you're all thinking. Hey, but you said there were four names that are confirmed. What if the fifth one might be a boy? Don't worry, my friend, I got you covered. Scott releases another book called Survival Logbook, which is crazy and insane if you're a FNAF lore lover. It's got so many clues and hints, but most importantly, this book was made to reveal the name of the fifth victim, the one who possesses Golden Freddy. And with the help of Reddit user, the name was revealed by using the numbers that MatPat founded and then using them in word search. And you get yourself the name Cassidy. And not just that, in the fourth closet, the name Cassidy was mentioned there as well. On page 208, my name is Susie she added. And that's Cassidy. A girl with long black hair approached, carrying more pictures in her arms. That means Cassidy is a black haired girl. And what do we see in survival logbook? A black haired girl getting a cake from a puppet. And before anyone can throw the argument of her hair is shorter in this image and in books it says long hair. Don't worry, I got you covered again. It's like smack for the rescue all the time. Because let's be honest, smack is the red guy. Hashtag smack is the red guy. Shout out to Phantom Hunter. If you look closely in the image, She's got ponytails with golden clips, and without it, her hair would be longer, so no point throwing in that argument. And where else have we seen this scenario before? That's right, FNAF 3, more specifically, Happiest Day minigame, where she got that birthday cake and boom, everyone got their soul to finally rest. Now you've got all that information? Good. Save that for later, because we're going for two more routes. Now I know that after MatPat said in his video that bite victim equals Mike, since in the book Fredbear was talking to book's owner, which supposedly was and is Mike, his name was written as a book owner, but later was crossed. I want you to keep that one out of your mind for this one. If you can't, think of it as, this book doesn't belong to Mike. However, it belongs to the bite victim, and since his frontal lobe is removed, the only name he can think of are the people closest to him, and that is Michael, his older brother. And how can I say it? Well, before that bite happened, the only family member that was there with them at the time was his older brother, and that's the only name he can think of at the time, which makes him write that name and then he crossed it out when he was trying to figure out his own name and memories. Or think of it as two brothers talking to each other in an indirect and spiritual way. Regardless, if you want, we're playing as Michael Afton in Ultimate Custom Night Theory, you have to eliminate the thought of Mike equals bite victim. Now with that information in mind, we can easily say that this quote unquote hell is for Michael, but at the same time, it's not. Think of it as a purgatory. You do bad actions, you die. You don't go to hell or heaven, but in a purgatory state at least in FNAF universe, where you suffer for the bad actions you've done in your life, cleanse your soul, and go into heaven. That's the exact same thing here, which is why you're seeing all of these animatronics, because Mike hasn't seen all these animatronics. It makes sense. He's been through all of this, and now he's paying for the action he did. Now, the question is, what action? And who's the one he shouldn't have killed? And all of that in the next video. Please forgive us as this script is already out of hand. This is by far the most lengthy script smack has ever written or wrote or will write. So we'll cover the rest of the identity of the one we shouldn't have killed for both Mike and Will Trap and as well as cutscenes in the next one. And we'll try to finish Ultimate Custom Night by then so we can move on to Final Mega Theory. And I'm so excited. But other than that, make sure to hit that like button and more importantly, hit that subscribe button. We're so close to 500 and this is the 100th episode of The Guy Gaming Show. Myself and the rest of the team couldn't be more proud. Your support is amazing and if you sit through all of this video and made it here, you are an amazing person. You make me happy, you make us happy, so thank you.
And until next time, keep FNAFing, if that's a thing. And well, from now on it is.